Woo, water heater is reflecting pretty well there. Anyway, some of you guys know about my uh, secret mission. I um, went to this family thing. And uh, yeah, sure as eggs. The Colombian relative was there. It's my brother-in-law's brother's long-term girlfriend. I don't know if it's actually a wife, but yeah. I've seen her once before. Uh, only once before. And uh, yeah, I, so I wouldn't say I got to know her there. Uh, I, I got to know what sort of a person she is. Uh, I wouldn't say I got to know her full stop, though. Um, yeah, she's about, holy smokes, she's only like 4 foot 10 or something like that. Um, long story short, uh, I asked her a bit about Columbia and whatnot. She, she sort of initially, my mum was talking to her and... Um, she uh, asked different, you know, a couple of different things as I joined in the conversation. You know, you're still living with your parents and that. No, nah, no, nah, he's, he's over there. Is he married? No. Nah. I said, no, nah, this is Australia. White girls here don't marry. <laughs> and uh, I could have then said, what about Columbia? You got any good ones for me? But I, I didn't at the time, which was sort of stupid. Um, I left it to later on. She smokes and she went out the side to have a cigarette and she's pissing around on her iPhone anyway. She got up to walk back inside once she put the cigarette out and and I started talking to her about Columbia and I said, look, honestly, it's been three years, I've been trying for three years and it's ridiculous. One in eight of the guys I work with get married. It's just hopeless after trying for three years. And then I basically uh, said... Uh, Tienes la hermana, la prima, uh, algo, amigas, which basically translates into do you have any um, sisters, female, cousins, um, something, friends, female friends. Uh, so do, do you have anyone? She goes, oh, maybe. And uh, she sort of, when I was asking her about Columbia and all that, uh, she said, are you going to Columbia? And I said, no. And then I, you know, hit her up with the Spanish. And uh, she said, uh, I said, and then I said in English, do you have anyone? And she said, I said, oh, maybe. And then she goes, are you going to Columbia? And I said, no, as in I'm not going to Columbia like, next month or anything and she said uh and i could tell that was the point i sort of stuffed up she goes ah oh, columbia is a very far away country sort of thing when i said you know no i'm not going to columbia um it was almost like one of those job interviews where if you say no or you say um or you say maybe you've lost the job but if you say yes to everything you're fine, uh, but you know, she said, are you going to Columbia, and I sort of, her English isn't that great, according to my sister, uh, I sort of read it in the context of, are you going there next month, if you go going there next month, I'll probably get a, you know, I'll email you next week with a big list of bloody <laughs> relatives of mine you can visit, sort of thing, uh, or, you know, set you up with me mother, and she can direct you from there. Uh, but I sort of said no, but this is the thing with some English, she, you know, she wouldn't ask, are you going to go there, or are you planning to go there, she would just say, are you going there? It's shorter, it's easier for her to say, but it, it confuses the context. Anyway, long story short, um... 
I realised a few minutes later, obviously, you know, where I stuffed up. But it doesn't really matter because I ended up talking to my sister about it all and uh, explained to my sister how, you know, I'm not learning Spanish for nothing. I'm, uh, I'll definitely go over there. But I don't want to... Apparently, <laughs> the flight over there... According to a guy at work, it's a solid 24-hour flight over there. Um, and, you know, basically, <laughs> if you get a connecting flight, you'll probably be flying for bloody three days straight. And as I said to my sister, I am not flying for three days straight, throwing up the whole time, um, for a, oh, maybe... Or a, uh, oh, well, you can meet her when you get there, but we don't know how it's, you know. I said, and this this Colombian girl, she's a computer technician. She's not stupid. She knows they all use Skype. And that's pretty common over there. Um, you know, I would rather get to know these girls over the internet uh, even if I've got to get myself a damn Facebook account um, and join in there, sort of, a, you know, her family on Facebook or whatever, um, you know, or something like that, you know, talk to them over Skype for a while or whatever until I sort of get to know them a bit better and then fly over on a reasonable chance not fly over there with a maybe with a never having seen them never having talked to them emailed them or nothing and then just sort of you know spend a couple of thousand dollars and, and three days hurling up in planes uh, just for a fucking maybe you know so anyway I'll get my sister on to all that um, and I explained half of it, well, about <laughs> two-thirds of it to my sister, maybe even more, uh, before the brother-in-law come back. Uh, so, yeah. It's, uh, anyway, I might as well talk about this uh, custom-made genetics this girl's got. Fuck, you wouldn't believe it. As I said, she's about sort of four foot ten. When she first come down uh, in the airplane, um... I'd got a plane earlier than all the rest of them. And so I actually went there with one of the vehicles to go and pick them all up. And she sort of walked around and she sort of gave me the whole up-down look. And then she, you know, looked me in the face sort of thing. She's a... <laughs> you may have heard of feisty Colombians. Fucking hell, does she fit the bill as a feisty Colombian. She's, uh... <laughs> Not the sort of person that would, um back down easily, tends to have a lot of drama, it, it's, you get some old Greeks that are like it, and particularly Italian women that are like it, you know what I mean, they're all, all emotion, sort of, you know, pretty feisty, some of them, I think feisty is the best way to describe um, this Colombian girl, and apparently that's very common amongst Colombians, um, I sort of said to my sister, uh, nice body and all that, but, um, you know, I, uh, I don't know I could really handle that much of a feisty personality all the damn time. And um, my sister said, well, you know, I already know she's got another sister. Just one other sister um, who is a single mum. Um, <clears throat> but having said that, she's likely to have cousins. And uh, it's like our cousins, all our cousins have different sort of personalities, you know, and and it may be like that, you know, similar genetics with a different personality, a more timid one that would suit you sort of thing. But uh, anyway, there's, back onto these genetics, I tell you what, fuck, if I get one of her little cousins that's like 25, 26, I might have just about hit the frickin' genetic jackpot. This is going to sound fucking weird, but I like them short. I like big tits, you all know that. Uh, bigger the better. 
if I look at a girl's face, the prettiness factor to me, like guys, sometimes the prettiness factor is number one. With me, it's it barely even registers, to be honest. Um, as long as there's big jugs, that is the number one, is big jugs. And I like them short, and I like them a little bit fat, too. Um, <laughs> so how's that for a list? Short, fat, and ugly. You know, so you wouldn't expect that I'd have a trouble finding a girl. Uh, but short, fat, and ugly with big tits. <laughs> anyway, as for this girl... I've seen her before. Now, this was going back when I was still living at home with my parents. Like, she's got a kid who's like five or six now, you know. And when I first saw her, it was before she's even pregnant. So it might have been going back six, seven years, you know. Um, but probably, yeah, probably seven years or something like that. Anyway, long story short, she's about four foot ten. When I first saw her, I just looked at her and the first thought that came to my mind, this is seven years ago, was fucking hell, there are two reasons why you've got into this country. Boob one and boob two. They were fucking huge. Holy smoke. Uh, and she had these jeans on. I know she had a little bit of a stomach that she you know, the jeans were looking pretty tight sort of thing. Um, and when I've seen her now, it's like... It's not that impressive sort of thing. You, you know, it's just like a basic C cup or something like that. And I sort of thought to myself, well, I wouldn't have noticed them if they were that size. You know, it's, it's just a small C cup now. You can tell, though, by a low-cut top that, you know, they've there's no gap in between them so that they have been rather big at some point sort of thing. Um, and it took me a few hours at least before the penny dropped on this one. She's had a kid. She has less guts now than she had when I first met her. She has a lot less boobs now than when I first met her too. And it took a few hours, but then the penny finally dropped. This is one of these girls where 90 to 95% of all the weight they put on just goes straight to their tits. And when they drop the weight off, their tits shrink back to nothing. Because there's no way that she theoretically should have less guts after having a kid than she before she had a kid and that explains why she's not busty anymore it's just, it's just one of those things one of those ones where the majority 90 percent of the weight just goes you know the fat just goes straight to the boobs and i thought flame and hell that is the genetic jackpot you don't always come across that but um <laughs> My sister was telling me had this uh, bit of a drawn-out story for a few minutes about, oh, the poor girl. And uh, she, when she had her kid, you know, five years ago or whatever, and was first started feeding the kid, and she said, oh, her tits got that big, it was absolutely ridiculous. She said, they were bloody four times the size they were before when she started feeding. And she's going on to me, oh, sister was sending the maternity bras and they wouldn't fit and all this, and she's getting annoyed about it, and she couldn't buy anything big enough in the shop, so I had to take this poor girl that wasn't too good with her English, I had to take her to this speciality bra shop to get bras made that were big enough to fit her, and, oh, it was so much weight on her, and her bra straps were cutting in, and uh, four times the size they were, and I'm like, Arrgh! oh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I could feel things tingling up on like that. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. I'm sitting there thinking, oh, gosh. My sister doesn't hold back with some subjects, you know. I can ask her pretty straight up things, and she'll tell me stuff pretty straight up, even if I don't want to hear it anyway. <laughs> but, um, yeah, she told me it was just... You had to see it, see them to believe it when she's breastfeeding. She said it was just freaking beyond the joke. The size of the girl versus how busty she got when she's feeding. And I said, oh, is it anything to do with weight? And she said, no, I think it was all just straight hormones just caused it sort of thing. But, um, yeah, you know, it's uh, if I could get one of these little um, 
little what's his name, a little cousin of hers, and just keep feeding her up on ice cream or something like that, I might be flaming hitting the jackpot, you know. I don't necessarily ain't busting for a girl who's fat as such, but it's one of these things that girls who are a little bit on the fatter side tend to have bigger tits in general anyway. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, I've sort of realised that if I went, you know, running back to her ten minutes later after she said, it wasn't like a, have you got anyone? No. It was like a, have you got anyone? Uh, maybe. It was a yes, but it was a guarded yes to see if I was going to be willing to travel to Colombia to meet these girls in person because the airfare costs versus the average wage of Colombians being $15 a day, I'm going to have to be the one doing the flying, not the other way around. And, you know, do they really want to have their... If I'm not willing to go to Colombia, they don't want to have all their time wasted with some long-distance relationship over Skype that's going nowhere, you know, and she was just, the answer was yes, but she was just trying to be guarded to dig around and see what sort of, you know, where I was at. There's one other thing too, I'm not probably supposed to say this, but fuck it, this channel is for all the things that I'm not supposed to say out loud to uh, everyone else. Apparently she's a bit doesn't really let her man, my brother-in-law's brother, out with his family that much. She sort of tries and keeps him away from his family and he doesn't really like it that much. But I think in a way it may be to do with the fact that she's got no family members here. And if she was to have a cousin or frickin' whatever, just another family member here, she might be... It's only a theory she might be a bit easier at letting him hang around his family. But that's a point that, you know, could help him get him on board to tell her, to, you know, this is a good idea, let him run with it. You know, it's a win-win situation. You know, I end up with something with fantastic genetics and probably big boobs in the equation. Um, and... You know, she will end up helping out a family member by, you know, essentially helping get the family member over here. Uh, and then she's got a family member that's here. You know, that she's not just sort of alone in this country without any family sort of thing. And, you know, it, it'll help her, it'll help her family, and it'll help me. It's It's win, win, win. So, you know, I can't see... Uh, what would really slow her up. But my sister is really the one to talk to her because my sister is, they know each other really well versus hasn't seen me for seven years, randomly hangs around for a couple of days but doesn't really have that much of a conversation, you know, and it's one of these things that sort of, um, let's face it, she doesn't really know me but she does know my sister. And uh, the other thing is if she's going to fuck around and my sister can just say, well, look, one way or the other, he's going over, you know, he's, he's learning Spanish for the purpose of making it easier to get a Spanish wife and, you know, to well, Latin American wife and, uh, you know, he's willing to learn another language just to get a wife, you know. That in itself should impress her a bit. Um, and... The other thing is, tell her that he's got to go to Columbia and get a girl anyway. And if not a Colombian girl, a Mexican girl. So either you get on board and you gain out of this, or, or you don't get on board and you fucking lose your chance at, you know, getting somebody else to fund uh, one of your family members coming over to this country. Um, you know, and... <laughs> It's going to happen whether you're on board or not, so your models will be on board for your own benefit or for your family's benefit, you know. So I don't think it'll take much convincing. Um, 
just so long as these girls are willing to stuff around on Facebook or Skype or whatever and and uh, work things out from there. But um, yeah, I think it's uh, a go. I, I I just hope I don't end up with one of these stereotypically feisty ones because they. Apparently, the uh, well, I've seen it already. They're pretty good at arguing. But I'll tell you what: for a girl who's probably my age and has had a kid, fuck, you would never know. Like she's she's kept very nice and trim, to be honest, and uh, quite long hair, almost down her ass. Um, but yeah, you know, I was just sort of looking at her, trying to have a guess what. The other female relatives are like, you know, I'm obviously not pervert at her, but um, i tell you what, like, the genetics is, you couldn't ask for any more, really, to be honest. Um, yeah.